Okay, so since both of us... Man, this is so much fun. This is fun. This is just fun. Since both of us are, uh, you know, experts on how to work the draft, <laughs> One of us, actually, we both uh, we both love the draft, right? We love the draft. We both love the draft. It, it, one of us, for one those of who your, don't know, one of your half dozen New York Times bestsellers, uh, War Room. So you've actually been in draft rooms. I've covered the draft. You've been in draft rooms. Um, I told you. Here, here's what I want to have happen. So if Lewis Riddick, who yesterday interviewed for the Texans, Friday interviewing for the Lions. Uh, Jaguars uh, reportedly are interested in setting up an interview. If Louis, I would be the assistant to the traveling secretary for Lewis Riddick if he called me. I would leave immediately. Uh, I feel to be so in uncomfortable that you are campaigning <laughs> for a job. I'm I'm can't, there are people like who do it. You're campaigning for I'm, a job as I am, a city. I am, I am float. I want to start a rumor here and now. We have I am in consideration even done. to be the assistant to the traveling secretary. Okay. We haven't even done 100 but, shows here yet. 100 <laughs> shows. Maybe I go and I get smarter and I bring it back. Point being, though, some of our friends are like, and people yeah. we've known, it's like this, this it's, it's coming back. Like names we are very familiar with are on the interview yeah. circuit. So we mentioned Lewis Riddick, right? So uh, earlier today, friend of the show, friend of ours, Thomas Dimitrov, uh, interviewing for Detroit's GM vacancy. Uh, that's next right. week, according to NFL Network. And then. This was a, a a blast from the from the past, even more of a blast from the past. Um, Scott Pioli, former Chiefs general manager and Patriots, he didn't have the Patriot title, uh, or just, yeah. I mean, he didn't have the general but manager was, title in New England, but he was a de facto, you know, top personnel czar. Next, he to was Bill a top Belichick. personnel. He was he, he led their yeah. he led their personnel department before he went to uh, Kansas City. Kansas City, uh, you know, and so. Uh, those two have they both work together with the Patriots, and as we know, Detroit just we thought Ooh, turned the page from the more. Patriot way by getting rid of Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia. Mike, even but, more. What's up? Yeah, they work together with the Patriots, and they work together with the Falcons for six years. That's right. Demi that's right. Dimitrov hired Pioli with Atlanta. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. So yes. just flip yeah. it around, where Pioli was the top guy in New England. And Dimitrov was his number two before he left. Yeah. Before he left yes. to Atlanta. To Atlanta, uh, yeah. In the uh, middle of the 2007 season. Flip it around. Dimitrov leading the personnel department with the Falcons. Pioli was his number two. Yeah. And now they're no, both and so, and Bob interviewing Quinn for the Detroit for both job. Um, and so the Lions, let's point out, they cannot interview GM candidates for other teams while the season is going on. So that's, this is, you know, we don't think the process is going to end here. It's just interesting yeah. because of the, the Patriot ties and, and what we just talked about, you know, trying to take a piece of that Patriot culture with Quinn and, 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 and Patricia. Um, I, the, the, the Dimitrov one, been in the game, Pioli been out for a few years. Uh, I've kept tabs on him, but I haven't talked to him in forever. So... I don't know if he would be willing to, you know, consider me for assistant to the traveling secretary or not, given how long it's been. It's like Sham said, I don't want to just call him and ask for something when I haven't talked to him in a long oh. time. But uh, <laughs> I'm, yeah, That's crazy. I'm desperate this at this crazy. point. Uh, but no, I mean, I, you know, Scott, I, 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 could, I could see it. It'll be interesting to see if the Lions, I'm, I'm more interested in the process, in the Lions interview process. Are they just doing due diligence? Or these serious candidates, and if they are serious candidates, are the Lions going to look at them through their own, through the lens of through the lens of their own, uh, you know, visions for franchises, and not through the lens of what they were in New England and what they, you know, brought to Kansas City and, and, and Atlanta. You know, does that make sense? Like, are they interviewing yeah. them on their own merit, or is this just more of trying to get some of that Patriot way uh, into Detroit? No, I, I think you would you would consider them based on uh, what they've done in their careers, and what's so interesting, to me, Mike, about these about these two guys uh, that I'm not even going to pretend. I'm just I'm, I'm just being straight up with you guys. I'm not even trying to pretend that I can be objective. No, uh, Thomas like them both. or Scott yeah. Pioli. Not only like them, yeah, both, we like I mean, them both. Uh, yeah. uh, like friends, uh, like they're both of them. Both of them are friends of mine. I'll just be flat out to tell you that. And so. Um, but they're so different. 
And it all depends. That's why I thought you were going with it to say what exactly is Detroit looking for because it depends on what you're looking for. They have they have different skills, and when they work together, that their their different skills complement each other. And so, mm. uh, not not to try to get you to. I'm not going to. That's start, interesting. Hey, By the yeah, way, that's interesting. I, and I, why so? Why, why do you say that? Well, no, no. I mean, like, okay, so Lewis, we both said yesterday for Lewis, wow, he should have his picker jobs. The, to me, the primo job is Jacksonville. I think you agree, just given all the picks and, and the talent, the young talent that they have there. Um, but, like, what if, they, what if they hired both and reunited them? You know, what if, what, if, what if Scott and Thomas came together? What if it was a package deal of some sorts? You know, that'd be interesting. It is when you say when they're together. Yeah. How they compliment each other just kind of gave me an idea. But go ahead. But yeah, but I think it would be tough for for both of them to, you know, to say, hey, I, I'm up for the general manager's job, and hey, here's your, and we got some nice prizes before you leave. Here's your consolation prize. You get the assistant GM. I think if they're both going to interview for that top job, both of them would want the top job uh, gotcha. in Detroit. I would say, you know, during that book process, uh, war room at the time, Thomas was with the Falcons, and and Pioli was with. Uh, Kansas City, Kansas City. And I had a yep. chance to look at all of those different draft rooms and those draft styles. That's why I said they're different. Like Scott um, is is more. Uh, he is a straight ahead kind of like a traditionalist. And yeah. okay, he's all about football. He wants this is what this is why I'm, this is why we're here. We're here to win championships. Uh, th there is a place for marketing. There's a place for business. But I am here to build a football team, and I want to put my focus on building an authentic football team. Whereas Thomas looks at it and says, yeah, I'm about football too, but I understand, hey, there's there's, there's marketing, there's public relations, there's yeah, other stuff more to it. that I just yeah. have to I have to give into. And so I, that one of the yeah. interesting conversations, and I, I was witness to it over dinner, they're kind of going back and forth like we do often. They're going back and forth, mo both making valid points Scott saying, hey, we got to make sure it's the core. Football is what we got what got us into this business. And Thomas yeah. is saying, hey, we we can't fight the machine now. It's changing. We got to open it up to other things. See, and you know both. what, Mike? You can see the difference. And I, I'll say this last thing. I'll give it back to you. Uh, yeah. You can see the difference in the draft rooms. It was so oh, like it was the, so the vibe and the mood me. in the draft room. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. In the and, and you know I like some wings too, so I was a part of the problem in the Atlanta draft room. The Atlanta draft room, it was a party. I mean, they yeah. had owners, they had limited owners in there. They had owners' kids. <laughs> I saw one scout come up. His plate was put, piled high with some wings. He had his <laughs> had his blue cheese on the side. He was yeah, like, that, oh, so where we good? We had his blue next? cheese and not ranch. I like that guy. Yeah, yeah. it was good. So that's the Atlanta. The, the only, Atlanta draft room was a party. I like it. No barbecue in Kansas City? They had no barbecue? They didn't cater with barbecue in Kansas City? Oh, they had barbecue in Kansas City outside the draft room. Ain't no food yeah. in the draft room. Ain't no yeah. talking in the draft room in Kansas City. Yeah. It was more Patriot-like. Yeah. Patriots, it's like a yeah. library in their draft room. Yeah. But Kansas City was somewhere between New England, closer to New England, much closer to New England than it was to Atlanta. And I yeah. think that's reflective of what we're talking about. So that's why I say when Detroit is looking at it, it what, what exactly are they trying to bring? Both of them have been executives of the year. Both of them have drafted well. So it's yeah. just a matter of who do you I, think fits with your organization? Again, just on a personal level, I was pleased to see these reports. You know, uh, yeah. listen, on a macro level, we know that there's a diversity issue. All right, let's, let's, let's call it like it is. There's a diversity issue at the highest levels in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And this is a this is a year of reckoning for that issue. A lot of eyes on the head coach at GM level to see if the NFL can improve these alarmingly low numbers when it comes to minority people running franchises. Um, so the idea of retreads kind of runs counter to that. However, um, and setting aside personal affection for both, and, and let's talk about just the respect. Because there is something to be said for it. I'd be curious to see how these guys would operate the next time around. Given the you know, experience that Thomas had in Atlanta, which he talked about with us on the show, given the experience that Scott had, and that they both had in New England, but also Scott had in Kansas City. And since then, you know, I I'm sure Scott is, it would be a different general manager, a different man now, yeah, older, wiser, 
Uh, yes. yes. You know, you, you talked to him more recently than yes. I have. Going yes. into it now than when he was in Kansas City. So uh, good luck to them both. Um, I know Thomas would call me. Thomas better call me. Thomas better call me and and and, and offer me. Did you get something. him into a party too? Are you are you claiming that you got him in a party? What'd you do for him? I don't think so. You haven't something. done anything for him. Uh, huh. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.